Welcome to Haltech Elite NSP Training Part 70. In this training module, we're going to be building on what we've talked about in the last training tutorial of our boost control basics within the closed loop routine. And now we're going to be looking at a little bit more advanced topics in this training module and then also reviewing data logs, looking at how the system is supposed to respond and what we should have going on within the closed loop routine. And then based on what the logs are showing us, we'll be able to tell what we need to change and how we need to change things. This is going to be taking the next step of working within the closed loop routine, understanding how to put it into practical terms. Without further wait, let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with our closed loop boost control once again with our Haltech Elite and our NSP software. This tutorial, we're going to focus on some of the additional things that we haven't discussed yet with our closed loop control. That's going to be some of our target offsets, our long term boost control trim offset. We're also going to be taking a look here as a quick demonstration on our engine simulator of how the boost control system is going to operate. And then lastly, we'll take a look at two different data log examples that I'm providing in our training course folder of a Toyota Supra that's being set up with boost control. And we actually have one data log that's going to show a boost leak and what the system was doing and how things were looking. We'll definitely have a good idea just as some real world data and some uh, something to compare against when you're setting up your boost control on your turbo engine. All right, let's jump in here and take a look at some of the basics and fundamentals here as we would cover in our last tutorial. It'll give us a nice introduction in here to this tutorial. So we know our closed loop system is going to be working based on what's known as boost air or the air between the actual and the target that we're going after. Now we can set our system based on wastegate pressure, based on manifold pressure, or based on boost pressure. The three different options, we can discuss that real quickly, they're going to be a little bit different in the way they're gonna handle some things. So manifold pressure is gonna be taking a look at your map pressure sensor. That's the most common, typical way we're gonna control boost. So we'll have our target boost coming from our target boost pressure table. We're gonna have our actual boost pressure measured from a map sensor. And the difference between those will calculate an error, which drives the entire system. Now, if we select wastegate pressure as our option, that means that we have a wastegate pressure sensor and we're basing the entire system off of wastegate pressure, not based on manifold pressure. That would be for CO2 based boost control. That's going to allow us to have a regulated amount of pressure that we can run through the wastegate. There's advantages to CO2 control. I'm not going to get into those right now, um, but that, that is an option and that is a selection option. And what would happen then if we're basing everything on our error in terms of our error that we're finding here, the tables wouldn't be based on boost pressure error, but would be based on our wastegate pressure error. And it would look at the difference between our target pressure for the wastegate and then the actual pressure to the wastegate. And what we're essentially doing is trying to control and regulate how much pressure is placed onto the wastegate to ramp up or down boost Similar to the idea of what we're talking about now, but it goes about things a little bit differently. So again, it's a different topic. And we also have boost pressure as an option. And boost pressure will be taking a look at not the manifold pressure, but the actual boost pressure sensor that would be fitted, let's say, before the throttle body. Um, that's, again, a kind of a different way to go about things. Typically, we're going to base things on manifold pressure. So we know we have manifold pressure that's going to be essentially driving the entire control and the air between the actual and the target, so actual boost, target boost, is our error. Now, in addition to this, we're finding that we have these different stages of control within the control routine. And we're finding that we have a spool up assist that's gonna act as a quick spool feature. It's gonna hold us at 100% duty cycle until we get to the point where we're reaching our control point offset. So the control point offset here will be literally taking a look at what we program here and comparing it against the actual target pressure. So if our control point offset here is something like five or four PSI, let's say four PSI, and our target here is eight PSI, it will hold us on the spool up assist. If we have that feature turned on, it'll hold us until we get up to around four PSI before the target. It'll then switch us over into our boost control base wastegate duty cycle table. This is gonna be the starting point for our boost control. And we can see that in the schematic that we have on screen right now. So our control point offsets met, we're at our base wastegate duty cycle, and we're gonna stay at the base values for the time specified in our boost control delay. Looks at the engine speed, looks at the time, 
This is a timer. Once we meet that specific amount of time, it then switches into taking a look at our boost pressure error or the error, the difference between our actual and the target. And the target again is specified right here. And then we have our gain factors. These factors all accumulate between proportional, integral, and derivative. They're cumulative, meaning they add together. So you might have your proportional adding 8% duty cycle. The integral might be taking away 2% and the derivative might be taking away 2%. And what you'd be left with would be eight plus negative two plus negative two. So the output from the system would then be a positive four. If our base wastegate duty cycle was specified at something like 30% duty cycle, it would be base plus the short term and the actual output, the true output would then be 34% at that period of time. And this system is dynamic. So the, the actual duty cycle output of what we're sending to the control solenoid is constantly varying, all based and driven upon the error or the difference between the actual and the target. Pretty straightforward, but again, a lot of moving pieces to the puzzle here in order to make things work properly. So now that we've just did a recap of what we talked about extensively in the last tutorial, let's jump in here and take a look at a few additional things that we need to consider when we're working with this closed loop system. Let's jump in here. So we're gonna go into our main area here into our navigation tree, and we're gonna jump here under engine functions. And then here, that's where we have our boost control on, and that's where we can access all of our tables that we're interested in. So our base duty cycle, target, delay, proportional integral derivative gains, and control point offset can all be accessed from our page display right here. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here, and you don't want to miss any of the videos are going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.